Reloaders Network and Range fans. We're back at it. That's right. I've got my 357 my concoction. Look at that. 357 full wad cutter. I've never seen it done before. I know they exist. Ed Harris is known for his article on 357 wad cutters or just wad cutters in general. But I've made my own uh, recipe using quick load. And we're going to put them out of a six inch Taurus Tracker 357 Magnum. Don't laugh at the tracker. This is one of the most accurate revolvers I have shot and it's been very durable over time and my testing platform for 357. So it's holding up quite well. So let's put these rounds across the chronograph and see how they do. If they do well, guys, then I will share the recipe with you and I'll show you how I came up with the recipe since literally there's not much out there at all about 357 Magnum and full wide cutters. Get my ears in. We're gonna go back to about five yards and put them across the chronograph. Dead center, 1156. Twelve oh three, nice shooting. I'm digging this round eleven hundred and seventy feet per second, and nice grouping. That's right, folks. The old Taurus Tracker is a seven shot. And look at that, easy extraction, folks. I've got a good load for 357 Magnum, full wide cutter, about 1,150 feet per second. Let's go down range and uh, see what the numbers are. Be right back. All right, let's review. 1113, 1174, 1182, 1178, 1203, 1156, a high of 1203, a low of 1113, average 1162, extreme spread, ah, that's a little too high, but we'll tweak the load, is 90, and the standard deviation is 31. Now, let's take a look at the target, folks. Let's see. Let's take a look at the old target. See if we can zoom in. Look at that target. Seven shots, 357 Magnum, out of the Taurus Tracker with my own generated 357 Magnum full wide cutter loads. That's it, folks. Stay tuned, because I'm going to share the load with you shortly after this clip. Folks, check it out. <laughs> so my good friend, like a brother to me, my brother, he's out here with me today, and look at what he brought out, folks. You know I always have something special at the end of the videos. Smith & Wesson Model 27. They just don't make them like this anymore. I mean, truly, the finish on this thing is unbelievable. We wanted to see that 357 Magnum Taurus is ported. You saw the numbers down range. We're gonna collect the numbers of the same exact load from this 357 Magnum with no porting, six and a half inch barrel. Gonna see how it groups and see what the speeds turn out like with the full wall cutter. Man, I'm excited about this one. Let's get to it. Go back to the same spot. Smith & Wesson Model 27. What a dream.
a little bit lower velocity. Which surprises me. That group is nasty. That surprises me. A little bit lower velocity, look at there. Ejects just fine. A Little bit lower velocity out of the Smith & Wesson Model 27. But man, the grouping down range was outstanding. Let's go down range, take a look at these numbers and uh, get a look at the target. So we're gonna review Smith & Wesson Model 27. 1092. 1,001, 1,098, 989, high, 1128, low, 989, not as consistent, average is 1061, extreme sped is 139 out of the Model 27, might have something to do with the cylinder gap, and the standard deviation is 62, folks. Let's take a look at the uh, target from the Smith & Wesson Model 27. There she is. That's right, folks. It looks like five shots. So there you have it. Man, I'm proud of this uh, full wide cutter 357 Magnum load. DayAtTheRage.com, the Reloaders Network. Thanks, guys, for all the support. Mr. Revolver Guy, signing out. Oh, gosh, here we go. I was getting ready to leave, but I just couldn't. Smith & Wesson, 627. How many rounds do you think's in this thing? It is a Smith & Wesson 627. Well, I said I was going to leave, but gosh, he keeps convincing me. He brought out such a nice revolver collection today that we're deciding to put even the 357 Magnum full wide cutters and moon clip across the chronograph. Count them, folks. Count them. That's it. That's right, folks. Eight shots, and guess what? All eject just fine. Let's go down range and see what the feeds are out of the eight-shot Smith & Wesson 627. So let's review Smith & Wesson 627. 1164, 11.51, 11.66, 11.35, 1162, 1054, 1086, a high of 1179, a low of 1054, average 1137. Extreme spread It is just as accurate, if not more accurate, than the other pistols we fired today. Let's take a look at that target and see what she looks like. This is from the Smith & Wesson 627. Take a look at that, folks. Take a look at that. That's eight shots. Eight shots from the Smith & Wesson 627. I could probably play with the load a little bit to get the extreme spread down. But I tell you what, from five to seven yards away, it is deadly accurate as you can see. And man, that full wide cutter, we know it will cut and do some damage. Seriously, now I'm gonna show you the load and how I came up with the load and using the quick load software. Stay tuned, let's get to the loading. 
All right, Range fans and Reloaders Network, I apologize for the length of the video, just having so much fun today. But there you saw full power 357 Magnum full wide cutter. Now the goal was to create that 357 Magnum load with 1,000 to 1,200 feet per second. The reason being, berries indicates you should keep their plated bullets below 1,250 feet per second. And I have a ton of reloading manuals that I combed over from even back in the 80s and could not find any loads pertaining to 357 Magnum full wad cutter. So that's when I broke out my quick load software, which is what you're seeing on the screen now. I would caution everyone to take the quick load ballistic software and not just take the standard settings. I never take the standard settings. Here's how I went about creating this load. Because I was using mixed brass, I took 10 cases and took the length of all 10 cases and the average came out to 1.285. I plugged that in the quick load. I then took one of those cases and measured it empty, then filled it with water and came out with 26.7 grains of water and plugged that into the H2O grains box. From there, I was looking for powder that will fill the case about 90% to avoid double charges just from a safety perspective. But also I found that with pistol and using this software, if I can find something with 90% fill case, you get pretty good accuracy out of it. But I didn't have any powder that would take me to that 90% full case. The closest thing I had was accurate number seven, which is what I ended up using that got me the closest at about 88% fill rate. I then started to plug the weight charges in and with 357 Magnum, the SAMI spec is 35,000 PSI. I knew that I wanted to be well below that with these test loads. And I knew I had to be below that anyways when you take into consideration that the plated bullets can't be run any hotter than 1,250 feet per second. You can see here that this load from quick load is well below the 35,000 PSI, and that's what we ended up firing on the range today, and that's how I ended up concocting this load, if you will. I didn't have time to shoot it at 50 yards today. It, we, all, we were running out of daylight. I only had time to shoot it across the chronograph, but I do have 50 more of these loads left that I plan to try in accuracy out to 50 yards from a pistol to see how well they do and if they stay stabilized at 50 yards. And also, I may get gutsy and put it in the old Marlin lever action and see how it does. But anyways, there you have it. Mr. Revolver Guy and his 357 Magnum full wad cutter specialty. Hope you enjoyed the video.